value system or your beliefs. Or, and so I'm one person at work and I'm one person at home. Of course that you're going to have an addiction or you're going to have a compulsion or you're going to have a problem. Because you're living in duality. So the one part of you, <laughs> but at least you have shifted people's perspective on eating. You have preached Ayurveda based on what I've spoken to you about. So even with the environment, you're bringing in your truth to your environment. But I still feel like I'm, 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 I'm living a really a dual life because it's so opposite of everything else I'm doing. Home. And so that is going to create illness. Mm -hmm. The most common thing I hear, I am a fraud. People think they're the biggest frauds because this is happening. I'm not living the life I dreamed of, I hear that. So we're all frauds. Because we're not living in my body spirit connection. So we take baby steps to get there. We don't beat ourselves up. <laughs> so you're taking your steps. I'm aware. You bring your vegan food, you preach Ayurveda to your colleague. But that thing of supposed to, in a normal job, those are disclaimers where we are still not being in our truth. But it's impossible to have two separate truths. It's one thing, and it's one thing only, and it's one thing in everything. And so when I was going through my battle with cancer, and my sister and my husband are like, rage, rage, rage. and I'm like, no. But then what? I would go into my meditation room and I would be like, am I wrong? So was I living my truth? No. I was being wrong. I was totally defying myself. Until one day I said, enough with this. And I call up my sister, my older sister, 10 years adopted, and she's like, my mom, no. But it took months. It took months. Because even though I was saying no, 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 this is my belief, this is my belief, I was still in doubt. So the minute you have that doubt, you're defying your belief system. And that's the trick of the mind. Will I be loved? Will I be accepted? And the ego is reminding you, oh, hell you will. Nobody loves you. You're not enough. Don't you remember when your mother at three years old told you? And that's the record you've got playing in your freaking head all day. So how can any of us, without a lot of work, realize that we are Purusha, that we are that chocolate chip cookie dough? It takes a lot of work. We have so many layers. And that's why Patanjali says, only at that moment can we start. But if your conflict of values, if you feel like a fraud, if you're saying something someplace and doing something another, your ego has got you. And that's all of us. Then, what happens? The ego has you so convinced that you are a piece of nothing, what do you do? The best. <laughs> Look at me. Nile. And you show everybody everything you're not. And it's like, oh, I'm the greatest. And look at me, and I do this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And then you go home and you do it all again. Oh, there's a fraud! It's one of this constant cycle. It's unbelievable. But the booty is there to say, wait a minute. Let's think about this. You need a job. And it may not be okay that you do tarot cards at your job. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I'm the psycho. I can't hold me. Okay? <laughs> That's because my boss was training Naruha like she was. <laughs> says, wait a minute, the intellect, we can't be doing
doing this, and then you can understand it from a logical point of view and see that it's not that you're defying, let's say, your philosophy. You're living your truth, but there is a place for everything. You can't just be discerning. And then when you can use that faculty, you can be like, okay, this is what I have to do at this point. We can't just be crazy kids all over. But you're doing it with an intention and with like a logic behind it. Not the emotion driving it, having a temper tantrum, I want to do this and I'm not allowed. It's a very different. That's the sound of the ego. Where the sound of the intellect is like, okay, you know what? I have to take this medicine. I have to, because it's gonna make me better. Or I have to do this because it's good for my children. And you can hear the voice that's speaking. If it's <laughs> or if it's <laughs> we know. We know the voice, the sound of the voice. Then you can discern which one is ruling there. Sparta, your Skyland. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And so listen to the voice that's speaking. Listen to what it's saying. Listen to the words. Are you telling yourself, I should, I'm better, it's never, it's always? Then you know that you're an ego. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a reasonable adult, call that the adult or the child voice like which one are you listening to the one that's telling you to eat the whole plate of chocolate is your kid there ain't no adult <laughs> that is going to be sitting there to tell you it's okay to eat three bars of chocolate <laughs> i mean i haven't found her if she exists please i'm waiting that's our child your inner child yes that just wants to indulge the adult is going to show up and say whoa this is not okay. So when you hear the, the voice, and our adult, think of a healthy adult and think of a child and how it sounds. Now, I, in my view of life, have created another voice, and I think that's the one you hear probably quite a bit. I call it the perfect older sister. Anyone have a perfect older sister? Anyone is the perfect older sister? Because I have a perfect older sister, and it sucks. <laughs> And she lives in my head 24 7. <laughs> that's the voice. <laughs> that's also ego. That's the voice that is, you should be doing this. Oh, I wouldn't do that. If you were better than that, you would do it. Just think of like the perfect older sister, like if anyone have you had one. <laughs> that's the ego. It's a little sad, too. <laughs> so that's when you're listening to your ego. And all it is is personality because the ego must create a differentiation to protect this, this sack of nothing, this bones and thing that's going to go back to the earth. And if we really think about it, what it, does our body do that's so wonderful? We excrete. We eliminate, we burn. <laughs> and this is what we, we're all consumed. I mean, we just have to kind of, th when we break things down, like, it's like the booty working. Like, oh my God, yeah, really? So that perfect older sister that I call it, that's all the ego. And the ego is constantly separating, separating. That's its function. That saves your life. When the lion comes to get you, that's going to get you the hell out of there. But most of us are using it to destroy. We're using it to remind ourselves of how inadequate we are. And that's why it's so destructive. But an ego is necessary. People say, I have no ego. A lie. <laughs> we all have an ego and we all use it really well. The ones that are saying that have no ego have a bigger ego at all. <laughs> we need an ego. I cannot let you come into my space and take my food if this is all I have. This is necessary. I need to protect. That is the function and nature of the body, to survive. But when it gets erroneous, when it gets out of control, it dictates us and that's where we, we can't detach. That's where you're going to find attachment. 
The ego will not let you let go of anything. So if you're having trouble with your homework, detaching from something, that's your ego. Sit it down and be friends with it and really see how it's running your life. So that's the, the function of the ego, to remind you that you're not enough, so that you acquire, so that you protect it, so that you're like separate from everybody else. And so those voices that are talking, if they're coming from the ego, they're not going to sound nice. Those are the voices you're hearing constantly. The ego connects us to the physical body. That's why we say my hands, my legs, my clothing, the my. Anytime you hear the my, it's always, always acquisition, uh, ego. Oh, I have a good note here. We, this is, this is, this is not test, this is for your, remember this class is really about for you. We only become aware of what is acceptable to the ego. What does that mean? We only become aware of what is acceptable to the ego. That's a good one. So we process things first. I don't know what connection I had when I wrote that, but it was good. <laughs> <laughs> we process things based on how we're willing to digest them. Right? But there's more. What's acceptable? <laughs> Let them have a chance, and if not, you chime in. Raise your hand. The parts of you that you fully accept and embrace <clears throat> are the parts of you that the ego wants you to see. The parts of you, I call it in my work, the shadow work. The shadow parts of us are the parts we don't want to see. That's why the assignment of the duality, in Diana's case, that I very much appreciate you opening and sharing that, because it's not easy to say that, where she has to look where she's the victim. The ego, the function, is to not allow her to see that. And you'll learn in astrology, everybody has victim, it's called Neptune. Everybody has ego, it's called Mars. Everybody's got anger and frustration and all of that. That's the beauty of astrology, is every single person has every single planet. So that shows you that it's hard to connect with those parts of you that aren't acceptable. The parts of you that you do not accept, the ego's function is, I don't have that. I am better than that person because I don't smoke. I don't have that. I'm not a victim like so-and-so. Oh my God, so-and-so is so jealous. Me? I don't have a jealous bone in my body. And that's the biggest jealous person. So the, that's important. For, just like listen to that. We only become aware of what ex is acceptable to the ego. That's our work. To see what we don't want to see about ourselves. To see what the ego is hiding under its mask. Think of the phantom of the opera. He wears the mask to not show you that scar. But when does she <coughs> fall in love? If you guys know the story, when does she fall in love with him and she rips off the mask and she sees him and it's true and it's disgusting? <coughs> you will fall in love with yourself when you see your good, your bad, and your ugly. That's when you're going to be like, damn, I am amazing. But until you get to that point, and we're all in that point, no one's there, then you're beating yourself up. Because when you rip off that mask, and man know thyself, and you see that scarred and good, bad, and ugly, what are you really seeing? Truth. For all that it is, the truth. And it's splendid. And it's, <gasps> wow. But these layers are there to tell us all about. So go tell everybody all your crap. No, not really, but you know, just mm -hmm. go like, yeah, I'm 
Sunday, Sunday. It's freeing. It is so freeing. So when you're with a client and a client has an issue and you have it too, don't be self-righteous and say, oh, say, I got that too, old girlfriend. I know exactly where you're coming from. I must say that in every session. <laughs> oh, God, please. I know. Let me tell you a story. All of a sudden, you okay. join with your client and you're like, oh, she's human? <laughs> Wow, because we all think that the other person, when I said before, other person is just like you. And so when you are that person, because when they come to you, you're the one, show them how normal you are. Oh God, please, I struggle with that too. You know how hard it is to get up every morning to do the damn fire? But then I feel so good afterwards. <coughs> just do it. I know. Oh my God, swooshing that oil around for 20 minutes. <laughs> That's me, everyone. That's the extent. Don't, don't get excited. Jesus. <laughs> you know. Stop like with the 20 minutes of oil. Woo! <laughs> it's like, yay! You did. Yeah. But in those 20 minutes, I'm quiet, which I'm never quiet. So it's like, wow! <laughs> and you tell your client, it's hard. I want to swallow it. I want to talk. I want to kick my dog. <laughs> but do it. Do it. And I'll tell my clients, I'll call you. I'll call you at 5 o'clock in the morning. We'll do it together. Like, get in there. That's a one way to like, defeat the ego. Get in there and be like, I got this with you. You're not going to call them. They're not going to ask you for it. Like, well, but it, it feels like. It's a camaraderie. And when you do that with that other person, it's like you're doing it with yourself instead of bashing yourself. Right. Because then you go and you tell the client, oh, here is all the things you need to do. And then they leave and you're like, wow, I don't do any of that. They're better than me. <laughs> <laughs> and he just made a comment, which I really loved. I think it was the first day he taught. He goes, then you find the yoga teacher who doesn't do yoga. <laughs> And there's so many, so, so many. So Don't be that person. If it's just practice what you preach, look to your class. I do nothing, but I do 20 minutes of freaking oil pulling, and that's it. Freaking own that, and that's your freaking torch. <laughs> Chitta holds a lot of that. But even we have to transcend that. Oh, I have one comment I want to mention about the Buddha. Because it's West and East. And I don't know how much you guys know about like um, when Christianity and Satan came, uh, you know, came into like the world, but it's when all of us kind of uh, retreated into this masculine world that we're fighting to kind of get out of. One of the issues with the Western world, the Western psychology, is that they put a lot of emphasis on thought and intelligence, on the beauty. The value of this world, like if I always say that if you're four, between four and 60, it's, it's, it's probably like 
16. 16 and 60, then you're of value in this world. Why? Or in, this, in our Western world. Because you can work and you choose to produce. If you're not producing, you're not of any worth. The intellect has to be in function. You have to be smart enough to press a cash register or sell books or be a, you know, a doctorate or whatever it is. Very different than the Eastern world. The East respects their children and their ancestors and their elderly. We don't. If you are not of producing, you put in a home. Kylie mm -hmm. has full of homes. Mm -hmm. And they're all playing dominoes and cards and no one goes to music. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the Western world has put too, too, too much emphasis on intelligence. Mm -hmm. And you're going to find a lot of people that want to learn, 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 and take this class and do this and do this and do that. And everything is about the intellect. The intellect has its limits. Okay? The intellect is what got us into this mess. Pre-Christianity, the world was ruled by women. Paganism, we honored the cycles of the moon, we plucked the herbs and the flowers. There was this island, this is from mythology, one of my favorite stories. There was an island of Amazonian women. The island of the Amazon women. Who lived on that island? Only women and children. And the women were big and they were warriors and they only had one breast. Because they would chop off their right breast so that they could pull their arrow really, really back. And they only went to the mainland to find a man when they wanted to have sex. <laughs> That's a beautiful idea. <laughs> And that's why the societies were matriarchal. It was women. Judaism, or Jews still keep that, where if the mother is Jewish, then you're really Jewish. If the mother isn't Jewish, then you're not Jewish. It's one of the only remaining matriarchal societies. And that was the concept. And then Christianity comes in, and the moon is bad, and the cycle is bad. And back then, a little astrology lesson, Back in the day, around Christmas time, when they pulled their last harvest, they had these big orgy parties called Saturnalia. It was named after Saturn, because Saturn was the god of the harvest. And it was the last harvest, and it was Christmas time when everything turns icy and cold. Well, when Christians come in, what do they do? Is that they take all the pagan religions, Saturnalia, Easter, which was called Oestra, the Druids, all the Druids, and they take the same dates to start brainwashing people into Christianity. Right. But Jesus was born on January uh, twenty. Right. When really he's a legal. Right. <laughs> yeah. oh, the son of uh, yes, the son I of God. Pisces. No, he brought in the era of Pisces. Oh. That's something different, but he is a Leo. So all of these uh, these men take over. And what is the only thing men have? Oh. If that, <laughs> they think with that, right? Yeah. If you want to say men are intellectual, men tend to be more rational, logical, mm -hmm. more than women. We're more empathic, we're more sensitive, we're more yeah, intuitive. Emotional. That's why they say a woman yeah. present can't be because then we're never going to walk. So as men take over, the intellect becomes the only faculty that matters. <laughs> and what happens to the intuition? It's squashed and squashed and squashed. And all of us are dying to take this intuition and bring it back into the world. And I say Mother Earth is pissed and she's coming back with a vengeance. That's why all the witches are coming back. That's my word. But this is what happened. So intellectual thought or the booty aspect became the only part that mattered. And we lost a lot of the sensitivity. We lost the emotion. That's why so many people have mental illness. They don't know how to feel. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to describe a feeling. People do not know what they feel. Oh, I have a feeling suppressive. Let's take a pill. Right. Mm -hmm. Intellect, intellect, intellect. I'm smart, I'm knowledgeable, I have a degree on the wall. I only believe what I see. That's it, exactly. When ironically, 
all of the old scientists were all Christians or religious. Science and religion used to be one and the same, and now they want to take religion out of school, and you see what the intellect has brought. So it has its place, but it is not everything. So that's really, really important. There's a real problem when that's all you do is emphasize. So let's talk about the chitta, and then we'll, we'll wrap up with just the chitta, and then tomorrow we'll start with the levels of chitta. So the chitta is the inner mind. When the soul, or the mind rather, goes inward, <clears throat> this is called chitta. You're gonna see this in a lot of texts as consciousness. Remember, this is not the soul. This is just one layer of the mind. But it's these words are used interchangeably, and that's why I wanted to stress that. This is the only part of the mind that allows for self-awareness. It's really where we know the truths, where our core emotions, feelings, and true knowing is stored. This is also where our automatic habits are stored. So our subconscious responses are stored. So I said that your Ahamkar is developed by seven. Prior to that, you are in full chitta mode. What do they say if you want the truth as to kid or a drug? Yeah. Yeah. No innovation. That's true. <laughs> None whatsoever. There is no individuation. And actually most of us don't even have it, is the truth. And you can see that in astrology. But there isn't that distinction. And that's why kids are like mommy and daddy and everything open. So the chitta part <coughs> is sucking in absolutely everything. So your real, real values, your real, real truths, the things that you really know are stored in that. This is also where we hold some scaras. Has everyone familiar with that word samskara? So it's literally like a scar of an energy body. It comes from past lives and really, really deep held beliefs. I mentioned before that you're enslaved to generations past that you don't even know why. That's also in the chitta. When we see the levels of the chitta tomorrow, then we'll talk about more of them. You were going to say something? No, no. But I am familiar with the so this is where, have you ever asked yourself, going back to the willpower, I don't know why I did that. I was doing so well. It's the chitta part of the mind that kicks in to whatever the need is. Oh, I need to eat three bars of chocolate because I wasn't nurtured correctly, so I overindulged in food. People who smoke may not have had <coughs> much love and they want to feel the feeling of being pissed. That's one of the reasons why people smoke. People also smoke because they want to create a, a smoke or feel smoke around them. They don't want to be really seen. Depending on the way the person <coughs> holds the smoke, if they hold it in their lungs or if they blow it out, each one of those things will tell you different things about the person. All of this is held in the gym. It's like the storehouse of it. Everything. That's where your demons are. That's where your Ahamkar does not want you to go. So it keeps you going after the girl, going after the car, going after this, going after the job. So you never have to delve in those muddy waters of what's down there. But yet, you're reacting to everything in your life from the chisel. So someone cuts you off and you're like, you <laughs> but I just left yoga class. <laughs> Your chitta does not care that you left yoga class because you never really made 100% true change. That's where the changes have to occur in the chitta in order for us to really shift our perspective and make behave real, 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 forever and a day changes, which is why we keep coming back lifetime after lifetime after lifetime because we don't make the change. And all of that is stored in the chitta. Okay. Do you guys want to go into the five levels? <laughs> I'm here <laughs> exhausted. <laughs>
five. Let me just tell you the five, and then we'll go up, and then okay. tomorrow we'll go deeply. Okay. So I have here. So that again, we have to continuously go back to that. Mind is one. These are just different functions of the mind. It's like trying to create a piece of a pie, but it's still one blueberry pie, okay? So now we're in the chitta, and there's five levels of chitta. The first one is jagrat. intuitive purpose? Right. Yes. The fourth <coughs> level is that. Okay. So like where I work, when I have access to the records, if it's records, that's where I work. Okay. So we even want to transcend. That's why a lot of people are like, um, oh, I do intuitive work for a living. That means I must be beyond. No, you're not. At all. Anybody Trust me, I do this for a living. I ain't know nothing. <laughs> okay. Can Anybody can do that. Any, absolutely, that's one of our, our, our God-given right. We're spirit having a human existence. Of course, we're going to have spirit. Right, we just have to develop it. And know right, and so that's one of the aspects of chitta is when we develop the intuition. However, we still have to go beyond that so that we can transcend that. So even having those gifts. I remember being at Five Sisters. Yes. Um, down in, in Pinecrest, the spiritual store, with crystals and stuff. And I walk in to buy something. As I'm walking in, I see this woman, obese, smoking, and on the phone, yelling. I, and I could have convinced that she was going to the store next door or worked at the store next door. I walk in, and the lady that owns, one of the ladies that owns the place is talking to a client. And I'm there getting my stuff. <coughs> She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, your reader is just right outside finishing her cigarette. She'll be right with you. <laughs> oh my god so this is a person and I once I heard the name and I've heard of this person and she does have very strong abilities based on what I've heard from many people who've got red fire wow that ability does not mean anything where is the work where has the work that you have to do so do not get convinced because people have these abilities that that makes them better, or they've done more work, or they're closer to God. And then within that, what level are you connecting to? Because <coughs> there's a lot of layers in the universe. But that is in the in the in the chitta. Yes. Okay. So these are the five sub levels of chitta, and then we'll wrap up. And tomorrow we'll go deeper into that. The first one is Jagrat, and this is the conscious mind. The second is Samskara Chitta, so we already spoke a little bit about that. But when someone has deja vu, would that be in the, in the Chitta? Yeah, it is believed that deja vu is like a remembrance of a past life. Different people have different belief systems. But yeah, if it's going to be held somewhere, it's going to be in the Would it be in the samskara? It could be, yes. That's the belief system. Remember, there's a lot of stuff out there. A lot. Especially with the new age. A lot. So I want to be just very true to Ayurveda. I can't speak to that specifically to Ayurveda, but it is the belief that yes, that it would be a past life, and if it were, then it would be here. Or how about like when you dream of something and then it happens, just like in your dream? Okay, that's prophetic, and that is having this ability. There's different types, I call them the clairs, clairvoyance, that's like a claircognizance, that's like a prophetic sort of ability, and that's in the fourth level. Okay, so all of those things though are stored here. So when you do any sort of like hypnosis, you're in the chitta. 
Anything that bypasses the intellect, the understanding, <coughs> is in the chitta. All of that. All the stuff that we're all mesmerized by, that we love, is in the chitta. Yoga Nidra is urine chitta. Yeah, and all of it. Right before that kind of sleep. Yes. Okay. Vasana chitta. <coughs> Oh, so this is the subconscious. <coughs> now, I'm going to tell you these sort of Eastern, Western terms tomorrow. We'll go more deep into what's held in each. But you're going to see subconscious, superconscious, super, super, you know, like that. So this is the <coughs> sub, subconscious. which is the sub super conscious and then the fifth is karana Many of you would be called Turiya, if we didn't kind of you know, go into that transcending. Okay, so then within the chitta, I just kind of like to compartmentalize. In your outer mind, you've got the desires, or the sense organs are directing you to do something. You've got the will, all of that. You've got your ego. That's where most people, it really correlates partly with the Dragrachita, which is where the conscious mind, where most of us live. Okay, that's what we're constantly sort of remaining in, day in and day out, day in and day out. The intellect, or the discrimination of the booty, allows us to intermediate between, wait a minute, I can eat the chocolate because my senses desire it, or wait a minute, let me go deeper and see what am I really hungry for. That's there. And then the chitta is all of that, whether it's memories, whether it's past lives, whether it's transgenerational, whether it's intuitive, all of the stuff from as a child you grabbed. Tomorrow I'll talk a little bit about the womb, the importance of the womb, how this all develops when we talk about the Manasparvati. We're talking about, I'm so sorry. <laughs> we're talking about how this all develops and then where we're all living at. And I have a questionnaire for each of you. You guys will do it. I'm sure most of you already kind of know that guna kind of thing that you're at. But <laughs> I was born in a car lady. <laughs> but then you can get an idea. And then we'll talk a little bit more about um, how this all develops. How this develops to me is the most fascinating thing. And then, of course, what are we going to do to transcend it, to get past all of this so that we can stop coming back? Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions before we wrap up? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Unless you have your dough cutter, oh, uh, <laughs> seems for uh, the chalk fabric. <laughs> Carlos could have made that for me. Oh, okay. Let's do this. Where tomorrow? Did you do something? I don't know, but he'll. He's coming.